am I ready to be out in a car and wearing this and filling up the car with gas? And this is what I look like at the gas station. You know, it's not your typical way of life. Being a Carmelite, the first thing that attracted me was the call to intimacy. So Carmel is, is a garden. It is a place where we are the Lord's. We dedicate our whole life for Him and for His people. So Carmel for me, um, means a life of intimacy with the Lord in prayer and union with God. And from that flows everything else. My full name is Sister Celine of the Holy Family, so that's my title. And I am a Carmelite sister of the Most Sacred Heart of Los Angeles. Both sides of my family are, are thorough Mexican and I love it. And I thank God for that and for my heritage. Everything around me helped me to run away from my vocation, including some of my relatives. Not my mom and dad, they were very, very, very um, supportive, but I was in public school all my life, many different sports. I was in band for several years and I was in track and I loved school. I loved being in that environment. So it was a jump, a leap of faith for sure, but I'm glad I made it. Yeah, so I, I grew up the oldest of three girls, and my dad had been a seminarian for a time in his life and discerned that wasn't his call. So we always knew growing up there were options for girls. We knew about sisters, and by the time college rolled around, I really um, did have a sense in my heart that I had such a strong desire to um, help others, that I wanted my whole life to be for others. My Carmelite vocation. Everybody talks about you need to read Story of a Soul by Saint Therese. And I put the book down and I just had this automatic connection after I finished the book. And I said to my mom, I have to be a Carmelite. I needed to take these steps of like getting on a plane and going to California. And there was an automatic feeling of an explosive joy. All the little parts of my heart was just finding its home. I, I did, once I entered, became a, uh, became a nurse, and it's been my great joy to work in various capacities, being at the bedside of our dying residents. Our community came from Mexico. We founded a TB sanatorium here in the United States, and that's where we were first serving young women that had tuberculosis, mostly Spanish-speaking at the time. And joining this, this long legacy, really there's an amazing legacy in the United States of just women, religious, um, founding hospitals and communities to specifically um, serve the underprivileged. Come on, we're gonna go around like a merry-go-round. Ready? And go! Every time I go out, um, people do see you, and whether you like it or not, they see God. Whether they like it or not, they see God. So many people are just hungry for love and for the Lord and for um, someone to um, understand them, to just be able to reach out to them. Sometimes they're not, they're not welcomed, they're not received, they don't experience love. So a great joy in religious life is being overwhelmed by God's love for me personally and being able to be a conduit of that love to others. Hey, I'm Zach Davis from America Media. Did you like that last video? I thought you might have since you watched to the end. You should hit the subscribe button to your right to get more great content from America Media. That'll make sure you don't miss a thing. So hit subscribe, I'll see you there.